Having a meal alone is completely foreign to me. In India, not only did we eat together, but we always cook together. And here is no different. But my only challenge is pleasing everyone. And zucchini is something my whole family loves. My family practically lives in my kitchen. From the time the kids come home from school until we finish our last meal, that's where you would find us. And once in a while, I make a whole menu of family favorites. Warm, colorful zucchini paneer, cooked in a spicy sauce. Rich, earthy lamb curry with a sweet surprise. Soothing red pepper soup, topped with toasted cumin and gulab jamun, an Indian donut, soaked in a spiced syrup. We'll start with zucchini paneer, and for that I need onion and some spices. I like to use grapeseed oil because it has high smoke point, but you can use any kind of cooking oil that you have at home. And for ginger, it has amazing health benefits, so ginger is always part of my meal quarter to half a cup of chopped onion. So here I have red onion. So the onions and ginger will go in. So cook for about two to three minutes until the onion starts softening. And now for the spices, what I have here is fenugreek seeds. Seeds have really nice, rich, bitter flavor that complements beautifully with the rest of the spices. Just a teaspoon, and then cumin seeds. So a tablespoon, and we have some turmeric powder. Turmeric powder gives really nice color, nice flavor. So a teaspoon of turmeric powder. I have chili pepper flakes. I am going to give a little bite to my zucchini, but if you don't like that heat, you don't have to add them in. So just a little bit. Color and the smell is looking really nice. So fresh tomato. Half a cup of chopped tomatoes. So cook this for another minute or so. So now for zucchini, just a half a cup I'm just going to add a little bit of water just to make sure that all the spices they mix together and we have a really nice sauce. Just a quarter of a cup and turn the heat to low and let it cook for 10 to 12 minutes or until the zucchini is tender. So now I'll be making garam masala for the dish. Gurm means warm, masala is mixture. So every household really has their own recipe and I have two or three different recipes for gurm masala. So for today, some coriander seeds, some cardamom seeds, and fennel because I like the flavor of fennel seeds, some cumin seeds, they'll give really nice earthy flavor. This is really short and quick. Just a teaspoon of cardamom seeds. So some coriander seeds for really nice, earthy, warm flavors. So two tablespoons of that. And a tablespoon of fennel seeds. And two tablespoons of cumin seeds. Again, just to give a really nice, earthy flavor. So this is a quick and short version of my garam masala. I'm not fully mixing it because I really like the bite and the crunch of the seeds. You can buy garam masala from Indian markets. So this is ready to add to the dish. So what I want is all the steam will bring the flavors out and that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna sprinkle like a tablespoon and put the lid back on. And now adding Paneer, which is Indian cheese. It's a similar to Italian bocaccini, like a soft mozzarella, but it's Indian cheese. 
here is made from regular cow's milk. So here, just a little bit of oil, two, three tablespoons. So I'm going to pan fry it to make it nice golden brown color, and the texture becomes more chewy, which I really like. While this is cooking, I'll get the cilantro. So we'll just sprinkle some cilantro. This is looking very nice, nice golden brown. Doesn't this look so beautiful? This with roti, which is Indian flatbread, or you can have it with rice. I eat it just like this. So good. I'm glad I didn't mix my masala fully. So I can have the bite of coriander and fennel, cumin, great flavors. Growing up, meat was reserved for something special but now I cook it all the time. My lamb curry is a perfect combination of herbs and spices and even a bit of sweetness. When I was growing up, there were some dishes that were cooked only for special occasions. With the right recipe, you can turn an everyday menu into something memorable. My lamb curry is a perfect combination of herbs and spices and even a bit of sweetness. Lamb, I cook only once a month, but it's a tasty indulgence that my whole family looks forward to. Lamb curry is something that I don't make very often. It's very rich and it's a once in a while indulgence, but when I make it, it's only for my family. Turn on the heat to low to medium. So I'm using some grapeseed oil, two or three tablespoons. So here I have to coat the lamb. So that I'll do with some flour and some spices. So here I have whole wheat flour, quarter cup to half a cup, and coriander powder, a tablespoon, and some salt and pepper. So mixing the flour with all the spices. And for lamb, I have lamb shoulder. So just dipping with the flour. My oil is nice and hot. So see the flour is drying up and the bottom is turning nice and brown. So I'll put them in a bowl. And for the sauce, some onion, garlic, ginger. So turn the heat to really low. So here, onions. So half a cup to cup onion. Lots of ginger, lots of garlic. Two tablespoons, three tablespoons. I'm gonna add some grapeseed oil to it. Let this, um, for two to three minutes, we'll let it cook. Really well, and everything is caramelized very nice and is smelling great. Now it's time to add spices. A tablespoon of cumin seeds, and a tablespoon of garam masala. tomato paste. Or maybe a little bit more than a tablespoon, let's see. Yeah, I want it really nice and thick, tangy flavor. So two tablespoons. And pepper, red pepper, any kind of vegetables are fine. You can have zucchini here, eggplant here. 
some tomatoes, two cups of tomatoes. Um, if you don't have fresh tomatoes, use canned tomatoes. This is my only recipe where I get to be a little silly and a little have a little fun and include everyone's favorites. So I will be including chocolate chips to this recipe. So quarter cup of chocolate chips. These are milk chocolate chips, but you can use semi-sweet or even dark. They bring all the flavors together and they will balance the spices. So some chili peppers, just give a little heat to it because now we have sweet in it, now we have this aromatic flavorful spices. So let's give a little bite to it. And now the meat will go in. This is very nice, the sauce looks beautiful. So another reason why I call this dish once a month, I am adding wine to it. I love wine. So half a cup. So a cup of water. I'll cook this for two hours until my lamb is nice and tender. This is ready. It's looking really nice and it's smelling so good. The onion, garlic, ginger, all the smells. The masala and the chocolate, so good. My son loves this curry. And you know what else he loves is my red pepper soup, which is so quick and easy to make. It's full of warm flavors and topped with one of my favorite spices. When I'm in a pinch for time and I want something quick and flavorful, I turn to soup. It's amazing how many different ingredients can be packed into a soup. My son's favorite is with red peppers and toasted seeds. Red pepper soup is a quick and easy dish to make that allows the flavors of red peppers and cumin seeds to shine. It makes a great lunch, but leftovers are rare once my family digs in. A warm red pepper soup with toasted cumin. So for the soup, I'm starting with garlic. So a tablespoon is plenty. Medium to high heat. I'm using some grapeseed oil, but you can use any cooking oil. And here I have a red onion, quarter cup to half a cup of red onion. I'll chop my red pepper. So cook for about two to three minutes until our onions are really nice and soft. So here I have mustard seeds. I'm using brown mustard seeds, but you can use this a lighter color. So a teaspoon of mustard seeds and a teaspoon of coriander powder. And hing, which is used a lot in South Indian food and a little bit in Northern Indian food as well. So hing is asafoetida. It smells so strong. The flavors are so beautiful. It complements really nicely the rest of the spices. Just a pinch is perfectly fine. And Spanish paprika, it doesn't give any heat, but it gives a really nice color. So just a half a teaspoon. And salt to taste. So for red pepper. So these are looking very nice and tender. So this is the time to add white wine and vegetable broth. Here I have a half a cup of vegetable broth and a half a cup of really nice white wine. It's absolutely my favorite. Mm. 
bring it to boil on high heat. Once it comes to boil, I'll turn it down, let it simmer for five minutes. A great complement to red pepper soup is cumin seeds, toasted cumin seeds. And for that, I just need a regular pan, any kind of pan, but I love my roti pan, so medium to high heat. Only 10 seconds, not more than that. Toasting the seeds will give them a nice nutty flavor. The color is already changing. Oh, it's smelling so good. So these are done and ready for the blender. So if the liquid is not enough to give you the desired consistency you're looking for, you can always add a little bit more water or vegetable broth. And now these toasted cumin seeds as garnish. crunchiness of cumin seeds, and then the finish with a really tiny hint of Spanish paprika. And I know exactly how to get rid of that heat. My Indian style donuts, their sweetness can beat any heat. Growing up, dessert was simple and usually just fruit. But once in a while, my mom would make something similar to mini donuts, and they were my absolute favorite. And now I make them for my children, and they cannot stop eating them. This dessert has become just as popular with my kids as it was for me growing up. And making gulab jamun is almost as fun as eating them. So here I have white sugar, and we need five cups of sugar and four cups of water. So bring this to boil, and then let it simmer for 20 to 25 minutes until our syrup begins to thicken just a little, not a whole lot, just a little. But what I'm going to be adding to this syrup is my favorite spice, which is star anise. Star anise has a nice licorice flavor. And then green cardamom. Green cardamoms are always used for dessert. Four, five, or six maybe. And now cloves. The cloves add a strong sweetness to the syrup. While we're waiting for the syrup, we will prepare the gulab jamuns, the Indian mini donuts. For the dough, I need a cup and a half dry milk. Dry milk is simply powdered milk. And half a cup of all-purpose flour. And quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And a cup or maybe just a little less than a cup uh, whipping cream. So the dough is ready. Medium heat. And the oil I'm using is a cooking oil, so I need at least half of the pan filled. So half a size of golf ball, because they will really puff up. Such a great treat. So the oil is nice and hot. So these are ready to go in. Turn golden brown right away. So low heat, nice and low. So these are ready. So quick and easy. So for three to five minutes in the syrup, 
and it will fluff up and all the flavor from the spices is infused in the syrup. I put them right in the pot so they can soak up all that flavor. I am in heaven. Not kidding. This is a great Indian version of donuts. All the flavors, the cardamoms and the cloves and star anise, very nice flavors. I think it's really important for families to eat together. And with these tempting dishes, you will have no problem bringing everyone around the table at mealtimes. Zucchini paneer. Warm zucchini paired with soft Indian cheese and coated in spices. Lamb curry, full of flavor, cooked in a rich sauce and a subtle hint of chocolate. Colorful red pepper soup, finished with the nutty flavor of toasted cumin. And one of my favorite sweets, gulab jamun, donuts drenched in Indian flavor.